This is Y News with Angelo Castro III and Darlene Basingan. Good evening. The Department of Foreign Affairs is now coordinating with Spanish officials to ensure the safety of Filipinos living and working there. Nel Maribohok will tell us why. At least 13 people died and more than 100 were injured when the van slammed into pedestrians in Barcelona's Las Ramblas district on Thursday in Spain. The Department of Foreign Affairs or DFA confirms that four Filipinos with Irish citizenship were among those who have been injured when a vehicle rammed into a crowd of people in Las Ramblas district. The DFA has yet to release the names of the four Filipino injured but notes that representatives from the Philippine Honorary Consulate already visited the victims at the hospital. Of the four, the mother and her daughter have already been released from the hospital while the father and his son remain under observation. The Philippine government condemns the terrorist attack. Our hearts and prayers go to the families and loved ones of the innocent victims who perished and those who got injured in Barcelona. Through the Philippine Embassy in Madrid and Consulate in Barcelona, Filipino authorities are now coordinating with Spanish officials and leaders of the Filipino community there to ensure the safety of about 20,000 Filipinos living in the northeastern Spanish city. Nel Maribohok, UNTV News and Rescue, Pasay City. Spanish Prime Minister Mariano Rajoy has declared a three-day period of national mourning for those killed in Barcelona on Thursday in what he has described as a jihadist attack. ISIS has claimed responsibility for the Las Ramblas attack via its AMAC agency. As security forces hunted for the van's driver, who is still on the loose, police confirmed they had killed five attackers in Cambrils to thwart a separate attack using explosive belts. Catalonia's ex-emergency services advise the community to stay home and avoid going out while government officials convened for a security meeting in connection with the attacks. Agriculture Secretary Emmanuel Mani Pinol confirms the, re the reported two cases of bird flu in the town of Nueva Ecija. Ray Pelayo, tell us why. Yes, uh, uh, it's been confirmed uh, following uh, laboratory tests that um, there are two cases now of uh, bird flu outbreak in uh, Nueva Ecija, specifically in the town of Jaén, uh, in a uh, quail farm, uh, and in a uh, uh, layer farm in uh, San Isidro uh, with a population of uh, 20,000. The avian flu is now in Nueva Ecija. The Department of Agriculture says there are two reported cases of bird flu in the province, particularly at poultry farms in the town of Jaén and San Isidro. Despite this, the Agriculture Secretary notes authorities have already addressed the situation and hopes the avian flu would no longer spread in other towns. But the good thing is, uh, right after this was reported to us early... Uh, early uh, this week no? or late last week we actually uh, instituted already quarantine measures voting no nagkapo set up na may og uh, quarantine so uh, we're not uh, we're not as worried as uh, HN and uh, San Isidro than we are with uh, with uh, San Luis Pampanga the DA is now enforcing a 1 kilometer quarantine radius and 7 kilometer control radius in the province Authorities are also continuously conducting surveillance in the area. The virus that is infecting fowls in Nueva Ecija is a subtype HB, similar to the strain that was found at poultry farms in San Luis, Pampanga. The agriculture official also notes the possibility that even before avian flu outbreak was declared in Pampanga, poultry animals from the said province might have already been brought to Nueva Ecija. And those birds are showing symptoms just now. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. The Department of Agriculture will implement biosecurity measures at all poultry farms across the country. Joyce Balancho will tell us why. 
To prevent a repeat of the spread of viruses like the avian influenza, the Department of Agriculture or DA seeks to implement tighter biosecurity measures in all farms and poultry across the country. Agriculture Secretary Manny Pinyol says this will prevent further animal and human transmission of the virus. Meron silang uh, biosecurity protocols. No? Pagkatapos nilang uh, umalis doon sa area, uh, dadaan sila ng uh, biosecurity procedures. Magdi-disinfect para the risk of spreading the virus will be minimized. Biosecurity is a kind of procedure that protects people and animals from harmful biological agents. The agriculture official says poultry owners should maintain the cleanliness of their animal cages and to have their farm workers use personal protective equipment in feeding them. DA says there should also be an area at the farm where the workers can disinfect themselves after a day's work and the equipment they used in feeding the animals. Pinyol says they will first enforce biosecurity measures in Pampanga, particularly in the town of San Luis. Itong mga biosecurity teams na ito will inspect all poultry, dockery, uh, hog uh, farms all over the country para malaman natin kung nagko-conform ba sila sa biosecurity standards and protocols na kinakailangan ng isang food production area. Agriculture Secretary Pinyol emphasizes the need to implement biosecurity measures to all poultry farmers in Pampanga to avoid the spread of the avian influenza virus in nearby areas. Pinyol says once the virus spread further, the poultry industry will fall and this may result into the Philippines' inclusion in blacklisted countries in terms of poultry exportation. Joyce Balancho, UNCV News and Rescue, Philippines. The Department of Health will also distribute anti-influenza tablets in several areas in Nueva Ecija. Aiko Miguel will tell us why. The Department of Health or DOH has already deployed personnel in Jaén and San Isidro in Nueva Ecija following the reported two cases of bird flu in the province. Health Assistant Secretary Eric Tayag says the DOH will help the personnel of the Department of Agriculture or DA in containing the virus. DOH will also distribute Oseltamivir or Tamiflu tablets for the individuals who have been exposed to the contaminated chickens. Ang Oseltamivir, Tamiflu ay binibigay po ng araw-araw sa sampung araw sa mga magsasagawa ng kaling, yung 1 kilometer at 7 kilometer radius, At ngayon po, hinihintay namin kung gano'ng kalawak po yung nasasakop ng outbreak. Ito po ay sa dalawang municipality, although tig-isang barangay lamang. The DOH has once again advised residents in Nueva Ecija to not panic and follow advisories from health and agriculture officials. Tayag also allays fears of the residents in towns near Jaén and San Isidro, assuring them that the DOH will focus on containing the virus to prevent it from further spreading. Ang binabantayan lamang po ng Department of Health ay ang mga nagtatrabaho sa manukan, hindi po kasama yung mga kahit na nakatira po kayo doon kung wala naman kayo manukan, hindi kayo kasama sa monitor ng Department of Health. The DOH also reminds the public of the very small possibility of animal-to-human transmission of the avian flu, especially since there are no reported cases yet of the virus in humans. Aiku Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Pasig City. Local officials of Angeles City, Pampanga, form a task force amid the avian influenza outbreak in nearby towns. Rajel Adora will tell us why. The local government unit of Angeles City in Pampanga has further tightened the area security against avian influenza virus. To do this, local officials form a task force to monitor and ensure that no chicken infected with the bird flu can enter the city. I-inspect natin yung mga papasok na manok dito, live man yan or uh, frozen or uh, yung nakakatay na. So we have uh, six portal entries dito sa lungsod ng Angeles. So maglalagay tayo ng uh, tao doon, tapos uh, mag, uh, yung mga veterinaryo, uh, regular nilang i-inspect yung mga manok na papasok sa city. Anyone attempting to bring chickens into the city must present a veterinary health certificate and a veterinary shipping permit stating their poultry products are examined and are not infected with a disease or virus. 
Meanwhile, local government official and some market vendors gathered earlier at the Angeles Public Market to dine with a variety of chicken menus. The bottle fight aimed to show the public that Angeles City is bird flu free. Angela City is far from the 1-kilometer quarantine area and 7-kilometer controlled area affected by the outbreak in Pampanga. Despite this, vendors in the city feel the drop in the sale of chickens although they have already lowered the price to 90 pesos from the current 130 pesos per kilogram. Hindi lang naman yung mga nagtitinda, hindi lang naman kami mga dealer, pati yung mga grower na kinukuhanan namin. Uh, na million-million talaga ang industry na itong sa poultry. Uh, kawawa din sila eh. Luging-lugi sila. Rajal Adora, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. The Philippine Coconut Authority and Coconut Farmers are hoping that the Coco Levy Bill will be enacted into law before the end of this year. Ray Pelayo explains why. Coconut farmers are complaining over delays in the deliberation of the Coco Levy Bill in Congress. The group Kilos Magdiniog said they prefer the Senate version of the bill as it favors small coconut farmers. Meanwhile, they are against some provisions of the bill's version in the lower house. Kung ano-anong interest na ang pumapasok dito na nais hatiin ang pondo, uh, at hindi lahat ito mapunta sa nangangailangan. The Philippine Coconut Authority explains that the Coco Levy Bill is among the priorities of the chief executive and it is expected to be signed this year. For its part, PCA is not in favor of distributing the fund directly to the farmers. Instead, PCA wants to create programs that will benefit all farmers. The Coco Levy Fund is a tax collected from cocoa farmers during the time of former President Ferdinand Marcos. It has now reached to 75 billion pesos. PCA Administrator Romulo De La Rosa said around 10 to 15 billion pesos might be the initial fund to be allocated for projects that includes research and development for the coconut industry. Katulad ng kanilang uh, health insurance, yung life insurance nila, yung uh, scholarships ng kanilang mga anak, uh, livelihood projects, Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Malacanang reiterates President Rodrigo Duterte's full support and trust for former Social Welfare Secretary Judy Tagiwalo. This is despite the times when she sided with the leftist groups opposing President Duterte's positions. The chief executive also has not yet designated her replacement. The President has repeatedly given full trust and support for Secretary Tagiwalo, even when she sided with leftist groups opposing the President's positions. In the end, however, the law requires that we abide by decisions of the Commission on Appointments on Presidential Nominations. We wish Secretary Tagiwalo all the best in her future endeavors. She knows she will always have the President's gratitude and friendship for the time, albeit brief, that they spent together in the service of our people. Former Social Welfare and Development Secretary Judy Tagiwalo asked the members of the Commission on Appointments to reveal the reason for her rejection. Grace Cassin tells us why. The reason behind the rejection of former DSWD Secretary Judy Tagiwalo is still unknown. This is unlike the case of former DFA Secretary Perfecto Yase Jr. who was rejected because of the issue of his citizenship and of former DNR Secretary Gina Lopez because of her opposition on mining. This prompted Tagiwalo to ask congressmen and senators about the reason why they voted against her. hindi nila ko binoto? Kasi kung totoo naman, hindi... At least nalaman ko, oy may ganito pala ako na problema. Mm -hmm. Pero kung hindi totoo, kailan mabigyan ako ng oportunidad para sabihin hindi ho tama ang batayan ninyo. Mm -hmm. Kung meron bumoto sa akin dahil sinabi nila nagbigay ako ng pera sa NPA, hindi ho totoo yan. In the program, Get It Straight with Danielle Razon this morning, Tagiwalo admitted that she refused to entertain the agenda of some personalities that came to her office. She thinks this is the possible reason on her rejection. Meron bang tumawag sa inyo na mga congressman para gumawa kayo o para paboran sila na ang magiging labas naman ay gagawa kayo ng isang bagay na labag sa batas? Uh, may mga uh, 
lumalapit, may mga usapan na ganoon. At pinapaliwanag ko sa kanila, ano nang pagkakaiba ngayon. Mm -hmm. Kasi dati nga talaga may entitlement sila. Tawag natin entitlement yan kasi nasagaan na may 70 million sila at meron silang uh, discretion kung saan yan ilalagay. Mm -hmm. Pero ngayon wala na ho yan. So sinasabi ko, hindi, wala, hindi ko magagawa yan. Tagiwalo also believes that the ongoing peace talks of the government between leftist group could be one of the reasons. Uh, hindi ba ninyo na raramdaman na yung naging problema with the peace talks has something to do also with your rejection? Okay, uh, posible. Again, walang ganyang usapan. Kayo po ini-recommend ng CPP, NPA, NDF. NPA po ba kayo? Hmm. Bumuka ba akong NPA? <laughs> Wala akong armas. Narito ako. Nagturo ako sa UP. May PhD ako. Tagiwalo does not plan to recommend any personalities to replace her as she leaves the decision to the president. Her only wish is to continue the core values they started in the agency to make sure that service will go directly to the people. Now that she is not a member of the cabinet, she plans to devote her time with her family. Grace Cast in UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Traffic congestion is now affecting motorists traversing major roads in EDSA. Asher Kadapan Jr. is in EDSA, Quezon Avenue to tell us why, live. Yes, Asher, go ahead. Hi, Darlene. Here is the latest traffic for tonight. For our live traffic point in Nepa Q Mart on left lane are those vehicles going to SM North experiences moderate traffic while those on the right lane going to Cobao are experiencing heavy traffic as of the current. Rush hour traffic congestion at the start of a long weekend over a rainy Friday evening results to a heavy traffic hitting roads across Metro Manila particularly in EDSA as of this time. Here in Edsa Quezon Avenue from a Monumento, Edsa southbound is on moderate to heavy traffic, but approaching Kamuning all the way to Taft Avenue is experiencing heavy traffic with some just or with just some areas gradually reducing congestion, specifically in Santolan, approaching Ortigas and Boniserano to Australia. Meanwhile, on your screen are vehicles on northbound lane are on bumper-to-bumper -bumper situation from Taft Avenue to Balintawak and will just experience a little lighter traffic upon approaching Monumento. Extra caution is advised to motorists against a slippery road due to scattered rain in Metro Manila and number coding will be suspended until uh, Monday. It will resume on Tuesday due to holidays on Monday. And that's the latest traffic for tonight. Back to you, Darlene. Thank you, Asher Kadapan Jr. reporting live from Edsa Quezon Avenue. Next on Y News. DOJ approves placing Patricia Bautista, the estranged wife of Comelec Chair Andres Bautista, under provisional admission of the Witness Protection Program. And the Muntinlupa RTC defers arraignment of Senator Laila de Lima for illegal drug trading case. Why News will be right back. Drivers of Uber streamed to the headquarters of Grab following LTFRV's decision allowing them to transfer to other transport network companies. Joan Anna explains why. Hundreds of Uber drivers went earlier to the office of Grab in Makati City to know the process of transferring to the said transport network company or TNC. This is after the Land Transportation, Franchising and Regulatory Board decided to allow them to transfer to other transport network firms while the suspension order it imposed on Uber remains in effect. The decision of the board is based on the urgency of the matter for public service, particularly the writing public 
for their convenience and benefit, as well as the PNBS who were displaced because of Uber's irregular conduct. The decision has been a sigh of relief for some Uber drivers, but they still appeal to the LTFRB to allow Uber to operate again. Maganda naman siya kahit papano kasi matutulungan niya kaming mga drivers operator ni, ni Uber. Maganda rin programa nila kasi para makakatulong sa amin sa pang-araw-araw namin kasi dito kami maasa, di ba? Sana eksyan nila yung suspension kasi masyadong haba pag 30 days. In a resolution the LTFRB released, Uber drivers can temporarily transfer to other transport network companies. They just have to present some documents like clearances from the National Bureau of Investigation or NBI and the PNP, as well as the copy of their Uber accreditation. The LTFRB has not set a quota or deadline on the processing of the transferring Uber drivers and peer operators. Meanwhile, Grab has expressed support to the decision of the LTFRB. However, the company clarifies that they will not accept any new applications of drivers. Sila po yung apektado po yung livelihood. Um, and what we do to ensure na wala pong nakakasingit na hindi, hindi accredited ng Uber, every day we will send the list, we've committed to send the list of who registered po uh, to the LTFRB para pwede po nila cross-check dun sa master list nila na sinabit ni Uber sa kanila. The second thing that we do is we require the driver and we record that uh, to provide evidence that uh, they've been driving for, for Uber uh, in uh, on or before July 16. Uh, Nanakredin po sila sa Uber. John Nano, UNCV News and Rescue, Makati City. The Department of Justice this afternoon admitted the wife of Comelec Chairman Andy Bautista under the Provisional Admission of the Witness Protection Program. Nel Maribuhok will tell us why. Department of Justice Secretary Vitaliano Aguirre and Patricia Bautista, wife of Comelec Commissioner Andy Bautista, have met this afternoon. According to the DOJ chief, Mrs. Bautista asked his approval for her to get admitted to the Witness Protection Program. Aguirre says there are requirements need to be completed first and assess her affidavit. She executed those already an affidavit dated on August 1, 2017, but uh, hindi pa yun ipapasa sa WPP. So we could not comment on it, although we have read it unofficially. At uh, alam ninyo, kinakailangan natin ng ESS ang statement, nagkakaroon ng memorandum of agreement between WPP and Mrs. Patricia. But the DOJ secretary says that for now, Mrs. Bautista will be under the provisional admission of WPP. Mrs. Bautista refused to comment on the issues regarding the alleged hidden wealth of her husband, but said that she is now facing a hard situation. It's been, it, it hasn't been easy, but um, you know, I've, I've, I've received a lot of support and kindness. Mrs. Bautista accused her husband of having close to a billion peso questionable wealth, which the Comelec chief already refuted. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. The Armed Forces of the Philippines ensures it will provide security protection for the students and residents who will return to the Mindanao State University next week. Rosa Licos tells us why. The Armed Forces of the Philippines, Philippine National Police, local government units, and Mindanao State University have been preparing for the return of the students and residents in the community on August 22. AFP spokesperson Brigadier General Restituto Padilla says the military will provide free transportation for the 800 students, personnel, and residents of MSU. He also ensures that the military will guard the safety of the MSU community even the battle in Marawi City is still ongoing. Yung MSU, MSU community kasi ay medyo malayo sa bakbakan. At uh, may, maari na natin i-guarantee yung safety nila dahil may mga puwersa din tayo naka... Meanwhile, the military is looking forward to the defeat of the ISIS-inspired Maute terrorist group in Marawi City the soonest possible time because the main battle area is reduced to a half-kilometer grid square. 
The military is also running after around 50 to 60 terrorists who had taken 30 hostages. The government also welcomes the manifest of support of the 41 local chief executives and ulamas or Muslim scholars in condemning terrorism and extremism. This will be a great help in preventing the spread of radicalism in Mindanao. The declaration of support by all the religious leaders of Marawi and Lanao province for the two fatwas that were issued is also most welcome because these are uh, very critical ingredients in our program to fight and prevent the spread of violent extremism and radicalism. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacania. AFP Chief of Staff General Eduardo Año remains thankful to President Rodrigo Duterte for his trust. Although his appointment as the Interior Secretary upon his retirement in October will not push a through. Leia Ilagan tells us why. The Republic Act 6975, Section 8 states, a former policeman or soldier cannot be appointed in the Department of the Interior and Local Government or the ILG one year after his or her retirement. But this does not affect AFP Chief of Staff General Eduardo Año. It was in May 2017 when President Rodrigo Duterte announced his decision to appoint Año as the new secretary of the DILG after he fired former Secretary Ismael Sueno. But the said plan did not push through when the crisis in Marawi City broke out. AFP Public Affairs Office Chief Colonel Edgar Arevalo says General Año is not yet thinking about where he will work after his retirement in October 26. The military official says... The chief of staff is very focused now on his work, especially since the crisis in and rehabilitation of Marawi City are still ongoing. Ang ating chief of staff ay uh, nakapokus pa rin sa kanyang ginagawa as uh, uh, chief of staff of the AFP and martial law implementor. Napakarami ng uh, responsibilidad at napakalaki ng uh, task na nakaatang sa kanyang balikat, kaya ang kanyang focus ay dito muna sa ginagawa nating uh, operation and soon the reconstruction and rehabilitation of uh, Marawi. A Revolu notes that the AFP chief of staff remains thankful that the president considered him for the cabinet post. He's, uh, he's, very, he's very thankful even at, that, at the moment that he was considered and actually named by the chief, the commander-in-chief to be the in Kuwait successor to the Secretary of Interior Local Government. Leia Ilagan, UNTV, News and Rescue Camp, Aguinaldo. UNP Chief Ronald De La Rosa reiterates that there is nothing unusual with the increasing number of casualties on the war on drugs campaign of the government. Monok Son will tell us why. A significant increase in the number of casualties on the war on drugs campaign of the government has taken place a few months before the retirement of PNP Chief Ronald Bato de la Rosa. This is due to the one-time big-time operation of the PNP in various parts of the country. 32 were killed in Bulacan, 25 in Manila, and recently 16 dead in Cabanava area. But according to de la Rosa, there is nothing unusual on the high number of casualties on their war on drugs operation. The high death toll is only a result of their intensified campaign. Malawakan, maramihan, maraming targets, simultaneous, sabay-sabay na ginawa. Kaya sabay-sabay rin ang resulta. Sabay-sabay rin naglabasan yung numero na napakataas sa maraming namatay. Dahil sabay-sabay rin sila nagpaglaban. De La Rosa says they will intensify more their campaign, especially now that the updated narco list from President Duterte is already with them. The PNP chief assures that there will be no sacred cows in the implementation of the war on drugs. We don't care kung sino matamaan. Mayaman ka man, mahirap ka, o ano ka, basta involved ka sa druga, talagang tatamaan ka. Hindi ka namin sasantuhin. De La Rosa points out that President Duterte's instruction to intensify the campaign has not changed. Ang instruction ni Pangulo is uh, very clear naman, continue the war on drugs. Wala siyang specific instruction na pumatay kayo ng marami. Ah, wala siyang instruction sa akin na patay mo lahat ng ganito. Wala. Ako rin wala akong instruction sa aking mga polis na 
mas maraming mamatay, mas masaya ako. The PNP, on the other hand, asked for the forgiveness of the family of those killed in the operation and assures that they will conduct an investigation to hold abusive police personnel responsible. Mon Hokson, UNTV News and Rescue, Camp Krami. Malacanang defends on you the massive police operations against illegal drugs. Rosalie Cost tells us why. Malacanang assures the public that the massive anti-drug operations of the Philippine National Police, in which more than 60 drug personalities were killed in Bulacan, Manila and Caloocan City this week, is not a reckless bloodletting. According to Malacanang, the operation that also yielded 200 arrests is the result of the active action of the police in destroying the drug apparatus in the country. Mr. President, it has been very clear from the very beginning. Uh, in the, uh, this is not a reckless exercise of uh, bloodletting. There's a rhyme and a reason in the, uh, in the police operation. The second leg of his three-leg campaign was really law and order. Number one, anti-crime, anti-corruption, and then anti-illegal drugs. Malacanang assures the people that the government will not tolerate policemen who are abusive of their authority. This after the controversial death of a 17-year-old grade 11 student in a drug bust operation in Caloocan, but witnesses said he did not resist arrest. Things, but what we can say with, with, sure, with, uh, with, uh, with, with confidence is that those who are guilty of breaking the law uh, or misuse or abuse will have to answer for that. Meanwhile, Malacanang says there is more alarming than the increased number of drug killings if the drug problem will not be forcefully resolved. I think it's also quite alarming the fact that uh, what is also equally alarming is that uh, when, when, when we did not face these things, that there was, there, was, uh, there was violence all over the land. I mean, old women being raped, babies being raped. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanya. The relatives of several missing individuals seek assistance from police following the discovery of Parahino mass graves in Osami City. Chris Kassin will tell us why. Osami's police chief Jovi Espinido says that after his men excavated some human bones last week at an area in Barangay Kapukaw C, some individuals went to their station asking for their missing loved ones. Aside from human bones, police also found some objects and clothes during the excavation which can help relatives of missing persons the opportunity to soon have an idea what happened to their loved ones. Espinido says the excavated human bones are now under the thorough examination of the medical legal unit of the police and that they are just now waiting for the results. Even before the excavation began, Espinido has called on the alleged victims of the Parohinogs and witnesses to come forward to file charges. Meanwhile, because of the worry of many Ozaminion that Espinido might be transferred to another area, the police defended his men. <laughs> The residents feared that the men and illegal activities of the Parohino would return when the police chief transfers to another unit. During his visit yesterday to Osami City, Police Chief Director General Ronald Bato de la Rosa assures that Espinido will not be transferred. Grace Casin, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. The Muntinlupa Regional Trial Court defers the arraignment of Senator Laila de Lima for her second illegal drug trading case. Meanwhile, the senator once again criticizes the Duterte administration's anti-illegal drugs campaign. Roderick Mendoza will tell us why. The Muntinlupa RTC Brands 205 this morning deferred the arraignment of Senator Laila de Lima for her second illegal drug trading case. Judge Amelia Fabros Corpuz reset the arraignment to September 15. 
This after the prosecution panel requested for more time to file a rejoinder and additional evidence. The Lima's legal team withdrew their motion to quash and will submit another to seek the dismissal of the case. Former Senator René Sagisag says they will include the statements of President Rodrigo Duterte and some members of the cabinet which imputed guilt on the senator. No way he, she could get a fair trial kung hindi titigilan ang kadadaldal nitong napakamakwentong pangulo natin. Sagisag noted Duterte's pronouncements will definitely affect the case. And for the president who's a lawyer to keep condemning someone in court will really persuade policemen, prosecutors, judges to toe the line, so to speak. The prosecution panel refused to give any statement. Meanwhile, Dilima hits anew the government's anti-drugs campaign. This after Duterte admitted that the country's problem on illegal drugs could not be solved in six months. Kahit ilan ang patayin nila, hindi po masasolve yung droga na yan. Kasi uh, maling approach. Dilima wishes her vindication will come soon as she celebrates her birthday on August 27. Her lawyer said before that the case with Brands 205 is the weakest of the three cases against the senator. Roderick Mendoza, UNTV News and Rescue, Muntilupa City. Residents of Southern Luzon and Visayas are expected to experience a rainy weekend. Tell us why, Leslie. Yes, Darlene Pag-asa says a tropical cyclone may enter the Philippine area of responsibility early next week. But as of the moment, the intertropical convergence zone is affecting southern Luzon and Visayas. So based on Pag-asa's forecast, may Maropa, Quezon, Bicol, and the whole Visayas will experience cloudy skies with light to moderate rains. While Metro Manila and the rest of the country will experience partly cloudy to cloudy skies with isolated rain showers and thunderstorms. Occasionally heavy rains and gusty winds may also be experienced in some parts of the country due to thunderstorms. Temperature forecast shows Metro Manila will have a will have a temperature of 26 to 34 degrees Celsius. Baguio City's temperature will range from 70 to 25 degrees Celsius. Metro Cebu will experience a temperature of 25 to 32 degrees Celsius, while Metro Davos' temperature will vary from 25 to 33 degrees Celsius. Tomorrow, the sun will rise at 5.43 in the morning. That's our weather forecast. Back to you, Darlene. Thank you, Leslie Longboa, and reporting from the UNTV Weather Center. Coming up on Y News... 37 inmates were killed in a government raid on a Venezuelan prison. And it is confirmed, the Philippines will host the 30th Southeast Asian Games in 2019. More from Y News after this break. Malacanang confirms that the Philippines will be hosting the 30th Southeast Asian Games in 2019. As early as now, the government is asking for the support of concerned government agencies to ensure success of the international sports event. We are pleased to announce that the Philippines will be hosting the 30th Southeast Asian Games in 2019. We ask all concerned agencies to give their full support and cooperation in preparing the country's hosting of the biennial event. To get the presidential spokesperson also congratulates all Filipino athletes participating in the ongoing 29th SEA Games in Malaysia and commend them for the honor they bring to the country. We wish our athletes good luck. Incidentally, they have begun bringing honor to the country with three medals as of yesterday a silver and two bronze medals. We congratulate the Philippine team for Sepak Takrao for winning the first silver medal from this season's Southeast Asian Games. We also extend our congratulations to our archers for the two bronze medals. KNC show host Moonlight feels excited for his blossoming career as an artist. Aiko Miguel will tell us why. We 
We've known 15-year-old KNC show host Luke Moonlight Alarcon as the Batang Artistic. Moonlight started to show his artistic skills since he was 5 years old. And at the age of 12, he already started painting. His family members, who are also artists, are his major influence. His artworks have also been part of group art exhibitions. And this time, the child prodigy will conduct his own art exhibit. Masaya din na, ano, ma-appreciate din yung mga gawa ko dun. Kasi, yun nga, dati hindi naman na, ano, na-appreciate ng mga tao kasi hindi naman na-expose yung gawa ko. So, ngayon, binigyan na ako ng sarili kong show. Kaya, yes, masaya. Moonlight's solo exhibit is entitled Prodigium or Prodigy in English. The exhibit will feature the young painter's new artworks that are a combination of classical and modern art. Nakikita nila dun yung ano. Yung mga bago kong ilalabas na composition ko, yung, yung bagong style na ilalabas ko siguro. Kasi yung ibig sabihin ng painting ko, yung classical tsaka modern art, nag, ano, siya, nag, parang nagka-clash sila. Yung classical ano kasi, painting, siya yung nagre-represent ng classical discipline dati ng mga tao yun. Tapos yung modern, ano naman, modern contemporary art, yung mga drip ng color ng mga neon color. Kasi yung, yung ibig sabihin naman nun, yung, yung society ngayon, yung modern era. Prodigium will be open tomorrow from 5 to 9 p.m. at the Provenance Art Gallery, Shangri-La in the Fort, BGC, Taguig. Alongside with this, his family will also conduct a separate group exhibit called Sanctuary. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Have a happy weekend. Yes, happy weekend to Jago and to all our viewers. I'll tell Jago. Yeah. <laughs> Those are the reasons behind the news. August 18, 2017, I am Angelo Castro III. Reasons we delivered to you as they unfold. I'm Darlene Basingan. Because we need to know. We will always ask why. Thank you for watching. Why, why News. news?